Hey guys, it's Danny. Today it's time for a Q&A session. So I'm going to answer some of the questions you guys left in the comment section of my videos in the past week. So without further ado, let's get started with the first question. So first of all, Emily wants to know how my Schleriana Phalaenopsis is doing in semi-hydro. And while she was doing really well, but I potted her in a pretty tiny pot, I needed to repot her. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna put her in a wick watering system just to make my life easier with watering. So overall, she was doing pretty well. Schlerianas are not big on producing roots. If you compare them to the standard Phalaenopsis, no, there's no similarity when it comes to root production. But overall, she seems to be doing quite okay. She does have one big root in the pot that I saw, and now she's starting to produce brand new roots, which you cannot see. <laughs> there we go. So she is starting to produce new roots at as it's summer, it is her growing season. So yeah, overall for me, the Schleriana does pretty well in a hydroponic pot, be it semi-hydro, self-watering, however you wanna call them. Mind you though, I don't think you should expect a heck of a ton of roots being produced like a standard Phalaenopsis. Alejandro Perez is asking about my variegated Phalaenopsis. You guys might have seen it in my previous video. It is a Phalaenopsis amabilis uh, variegated leaf. It is actually a recent addition. It's from Orchid Garden in Poland, and I think they have the Sogo Vivian as well. I have the Sogo Vivian, it's not variegated, so no point in having that in a variegated form, but that one is more of a miniature. This one supposedly is not a miniature. She's just tiny. Regarding my variegated orchids collection, I do have a video in which I talk about them. Check it down below in the description if you missed it. I don't know if it's time to update that because I don't feel like I added a lot of variegated orchids. I'll definitely do an update when I have enough. Maybe I do, I don't know. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you for the suggestion. Cindy says she has some problems with her Miltoniopsis orchids. And what do I think about all of this? Well, first of all, you're not the only one with Miltoniopsis problems. Out of all of these orchids that are easily found in flower shops or garden centers, Miltoniopsis, I personally feel, do not belong there because they are actually more advanced growers type of orchids. So as you can see, I do have Phalaenopsis suffering from the very same symptoms as yours. In my experience, this is simply due to the lack of vigor, that's for starters, of this orchid. Second, improper environment. These are cooler growers. They're actually cool to intermediate. They like very high moisture and pretty much what I would consider the downfall of these orchids is the temperature. Some of these hybrids or individuals are a little bit more vigorous depending how you purchase them. On the market, these orchids don't really come with good root systems because obviously flower shops and garden centers are not the proper environment for them. So from the get-go, you can get a bad one, but sometimes it happens that they do have good roots and you start caring for them and everything goes well in the cooler months and then um, the warmer months come and everything just turns to dust. So in my experience, this yellowing, oranging, whatever you want to call it, of the pseudobulbs and leaves, it's not caused by affections, pests or disease or anything of the sorts. It is purely a combination of the environment and the finickiness of this orchid. In your case, to try to help your orchid, I would try to maintain temperatures lower, try to increase humidity around the plant, a cool mist humidifier, aka ultrasonic humidifier will do a great job. Humidity trays, if you're only gonna use one, they don't really do much, so don't hassle with them. Keep the orchid in high humidity, make sure that it doesn't go dry, it does not like to stay dry. Make sure you don't over fertilize it, it has very sensitive roots when it comes to fertilizer, Build up, so maybe try to flush a little bit the uh, medium, try to provide as pure water as possible together with the fertilizer. They really don't react well to the high minerals in tap water if you have hard water. Um, the list can actually go on, and I'm sorry I don't have the proper solution for you, but Miltoniopsis are really not home grower material. In a home you can have dry air, you can have high temperatures, you're dealing with tap water rather than osmosis water, it's really not a home growing orchid to be fully honest with you. These are some guidelines for Miltoniopsis, I'll also share with you down below a video in which I talk more about them, but yeah, you're not the only one with issues, I have issues as well. A viewer is asking what's wrong with their Phalaenopsis type dendrobiums. The leaves on the older canes turned yellow and fell. 
The new shoots look healthy, new pseudobulbs look healthy, should you cut the unhealthy canes? Well, first of all, I know these are called evergreen dendrobiums, but they're not. In my experience, I've never been able to maintain a full set of very old canes with leaves. Eventually, they do fall. Now, there are some factors which help, such as stress. If the orchid does not have roots or is suffering from dehydration or things of the sort, the older leaves will yellow and fall. Um, I believe that the energy and the sap from those those leaves is absorbed into the canes and it actually helps the new growth. So if there are no stress factors, those leaves will remain on the orchid for a few years. But if there are stress factors, it doesn't mean the orchid is sick or anything, the leaves will pretty much fall. At least this has been my experience. So I don't think your orchid is sick. I do not think you should cut any of the canes. If the canes are uh, yellow, dried and shriveled, yes, you can cut them if they're dead. But if they're green, just leafless, leave them there because they will store energy, nutrients, water, they will help the new growth. And overall, I don't think you have any reason to worry. Maybe your orchid was a little bit stressed recently, maybe heat, maybe um, try to be more on point with watering. But overall, if the canes are green and plump, new growth is luscious, there is root production, there's also a flower spike, I don't think your orchid is in any danger. So I would care for it uh, normally, try to see if there are any stress factors. If not, that's okay, don't worry about it. Returning to the Phalaenopsis chilariana, Elizabeth has a very interesting question. Apparently her orchid is losing her mottled pattern and it's simply turning green. And if I have any idea what's going on. First of all, my first guess would be that your chilariana is not necessarily a pure chilariana. Maybe it is actually a hybrid and if the genes of the other parent start to shine through and if the other parent obviously has green leaves, there you have it, your orchid might start to turn green. If it's not a hybrid, maybe it's a particular cultivar of the Schillerianas. Some Schillerianas don't have a very striking modeling, but again, I'm not sure if this has to do with the fact that they're hybrids or just different cultivars altogether. Or maybe there's a glitch when they propagated them. Sometimes it happens. Overall, one, it could be genetical. You might actually have a hybrid rather than a pure species or a variety which has rather green leaves. And second of all, I actually did a Google search to see if there is anybody else with this problem. I did find a discussion and yet again they were talking about the hybrid issue but also the fact that under high light these orchids tend to lose their pattern. So check the light in which you keep your Schillerianna. If you don't keep it in very bright light, you know, obviously you can exclude this possibility, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Just in case you are actually providing too much light for your plant, maybe try to tone it down a little bit, keep the orchid in bright shade. It is a Phalaenopsis, it doesn't need direct sunshine. I keep mine under lights and that's the pattern, but I tend to believe it has to do with genetics. I hope I'm wrong though, and with the switch in light you could reverse the process. Lee Summer is asking about a dendrobium nobuli. Apparently, the buds have turned to leaves. It's always outdoors, and if I would be able to advise. I'm guessing you're in the southern hemisphere right now, because it's summer here, so it should be winter there. It's the season when dendrobium nobilis should start to bloom. Well, I suspect it has to do with the environment. These orchids bloom a lot better if in winter you provide slightly lower temperatures but also you cut fertilizer especially high nitrogen fertilizer and not only fertilizer you kind of need to cut back on the watering aspect as well just look at the canes and if they don't shrivel don't water typically when you continue to fertilize dendrobium nobilis continue to offer them pretty high temperatures and give them abundant watering they will simply grow vegetatively the little nodes on your dendrobium nobili are actually keikis, I suspect. They're not new leaves. So at this point, I don't think you can actually rebloom this orchid. You kind of have to wait for another set of growths to mature and then you can go through the process of the winter rest. I'll share with you down below my tutorial on dendrobium nobili orchids in which I talk about the winter rest, just so you know a little bit about the growth cycle. But yeah, these orchids need a distinctive summer and winter and that actually helps with blooming. There are cases in which some hybrids are easier to bloom, but there are cases in which some individuals or hybrids simply refuse to bloom if you don't go through 
after the winter rest. Also, there is one type of dendrobium nobili, let's call it like that. I don't consider it a nobili, but anyway, the Stardust Dendrobium, which is a cakey factory. It is very, 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 very prone to cakeys. It actually can over cakey itself and die. It's what happened to mine, and not only. If you have this dendrobium, then what you're experiencing is pretty normal, sad and normal at the same time. I don't know what you should do. I'm currently waiting to find one to experiment on it as well. I need to find a way to inhibit those keikis. But anyway, if you don't have this particular one, I would go for the winter rest theory. Lori has some issues with a phalaenopsis orchid and is asking if I could help. First of all, don't cry. I know it's sad to lose orchids and I lose orchids all the time. Everybody does. Sometimes it's really out of our powers. The best thing we can do is actually learn from these experiences and do better next time or better choose orchids when we purchase them. Um, so sadly, Lori, I don't think I have very good news for you. I believe your orchid has or had crown rot and as you can see mine is suffering from the very same thing and I know it's pretty frustrating I'm pretty frustrated about this one as well do you know which one this was you guys the yellow one my favorite favorite phalaenopsis of this year what to do such is life we have to move on so whenever top leaves start to yellow and fall that is a very clear sign of crown rot crown rot happens when water gets trapped in the crown and doesn't have time to evaporate water can get trapped in the crown if you pour water from the top when you water or in the flower shops when they water they just hose everything and they don't care rule number one with phalaenopsis never put water in the crown because the crown is like a funnel when water gets in there it goes pretty pretty deep and even if you try to remove it with a paper napkin which you should there's no guarantee that the water is completely gone in nature phalaenopsis orchids are actually growing on their side and water just runs off their leaves you can see a better example there but the phalaenopsis orchids that we purchase are grown upright due to economy reasons among other reasons and they're very prone to crown rot. It is actually the number one weakness of the otherwise very strong Phalaenopsis orchid. When you have crown rot, typically the root system will be in perfect condition. It will be green um, and this is because things take time to happen. In the end, the roots will be gone as well. Now, crown rot can actually be cured if you spot it in time. I'll link it down below to one of my videos. You can actually do it with household um, items. So that's great. The only thing is to spot it in time. If two leaves fell, you might actually be able to save the orchid. If everything fell, like in, yeah, like in my case here and there's nothing left, there's nothing you can do about it. This is the axis. This is the core of the orchid. From here is where new roots, new keikis, new leaves sprout. If the core is gone, everything is gone. Um, so there we have it. I hope you can save it. Check the description down below and first and foremost, don't be sad. Such is life. All we can do is just be stronger for the sake of our other plants. My viewer is asking if there is any way to increase the number of flowers on a Phalaenopsis orchid, I presume, and they're giving as example Phalaenopsis with 50 plus flowers. Well, first of all, you have to think about genetics. If we're talking about Violacea, Bellinas and some of their hybrids, it is impossible to get that amount of flowers because genetically they're not programmed to do that. There are however Phalaenopsis which can. One of them is the Schilleriana. So the Schilleriana and her hybrids and other standard Phalaenopsis orchids on the market, they do have the potential to create lots of blooms if their genetics permit. So not all of the orchids will produce 20 flowers at once. There are only some hybrids which can do that. Now, if you refer to an orchid which has the potential to produce so many flowers, obviously care plays an important role. Meeting the external requirements of the orchid, such as temperature, light, and all of those fun stuff, but also being on point with fertilizer and also not stress the orchid, they will all help with the amount of blooms. There isn't any trick to it, it's just good care. If the orchid is not stressed and it's fed, is mature enough, and its genetics can permit it to produce 50 plus flowers, it will. 
And the last questions of today have to do with the hydroponic pots. Well, I actually explained it in yesterday's video. If you missed it, check it down below. The short version is a semi-hydro reservoir has liquor and water, more liquor than water, while a self-watering pot doesn't have a reservoir full of liquor and water, just water. Therefore, it has more water, but I do explain it in a lot more detail in yesterday's video. Also, Larry is asking how I will go about watering in winter time. Again, I talked about it in yesterday's video in more detail, but the short answer is nobody says you need to use the reservoir in winter time or whenever you don't feel like using it. You can just dump the water or not put so much water or just run water at the sink through the orchid and put it back and just use that reservoir as a decorative container. It's as easy as that. Alrighty guys, this has been the video for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have other questions, just uh, leave them in a comment and I'll try to answer them in my next Q&A video. So you know the drill, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other orchid related topics. And if you want YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a video, just turn on all notifications for my channel. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.